out there in YouTube land. This is Will the Dragon Whisperer. This is my beautiful, sweet little girl, Athena. And this is another video for the channel. Now, first off in this video, I want to send some big shout outs to some people. Black Strider 147, first off, who wrote one of the wittiest, most clever, funny comments I've ever gotten on the channel on the last video I made with Rex and Tyrus, the live feeding, and it made me laugh out loud. Thank you so much, Black Strider 147. And another big shout out to Midnight 24435, who wrote one of the most thoughtful, a uh, nice, most encouraging comments I'd ever received on the channel. Um, he really took some time, and it was well written, and I really appreciate it. He said a lot of things that I needed to hear at the time. So big shout outs to both of those guys, Black Strider 147 and Midnight 24435. Now this weekend, I was able to bend at the Repicon in Charlotte. It was really awesome. Got a lot of great footage for you guys, and we'll be posting that video later on in the week or first of next week. Now, Sunday was my birthday, and I was very blessed to have a vendor and a close friend that gifted me some really cool animals to add to the collection. And I'm super excited to show them to you guys. The first will be the Dendrobatus tinctioris azurus, which is the blue uh, poison dart frog. And I also got a pair of Peter's banded skinks. So in this video, I'm going to be throwing the enclosures together for both of those species. And while I'm throwing those enclosures together, I'm going to be going over uh, briefly, kind of quickly, their general care. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I uh, hope you guys smash that like button, ring that notification bell. So let's jump right into it and let's hit the road. Okay guys, at this time I'm going to go ahead and get the enclosure set up. I'm going to put the time lapse on and while I'm doing that I'm going to go over all the care information for the uh, Dendrobates tinctorius azurius, the uh, blue poison dart, dart frog. I already have a humidity gauge mounted in here. Got the substrate or the drainage layer, I'm sorry, already in there that I boiled off, sanitized. This cage has some water spots because it's been used but I thoroughly sanitized it. It's been washed multiple times inside and out with chlorohexidine to make sure it's perfectly good and clean and safe for the dart frogs i've got my substrate here i'm using creature soil um, i'll go over a little bit later why i'm using that um, it's a mixture of a couple of different substrates um, and then i've got my springtail colony got a few enrichment items i am going to put a few fake plants in here just to see how they work out even though uh, live plants is what you really want in your dark frog enclosures got a cork round there this is the live plant i'm going to put in a pothos uh, it's kind of a viney plant so i'm gonna see if i can't break it up and actually use it in a couple of different spots and then we've got some different mosses and, and substrates we're going to use here uh, to help the humidity and I've got my screen that I'm going to be putting in over my drainage layer uh, before I put the substrate in so we're going to go ahead and get that rolling here and go over all the care information while the time lapse rolls here we go Okay, these guys hail from southern Suriname, which is in northern South America. This is the Dendrobates tinctorius. Um, there's about 30 different varieties of tinks, as they're commonly referred to in the hobby. Um, this is the Azurius, or Azure Blue species, um, or locale. This is a species that lives about five to seven years in the wild, um, but they have been known to live 10 years or longer in captivity. Um, full grown, they reach about eight grams and uh, about three to five centimeters in length. Uh, females are typically bigger at about a half a centimeter longer. Um, they reach sexual maturity at about the two year mark. Um, temperatures very similar to crested geckos the basic rule with these guys is if you're comfortable they're comfortable between 65 and 75 degrees uh 72 to 75 being the optimal temperature um anything below 65 at night you might want to have some kind of supplemental heat but make sure your temperatures don't get above 82 to 83 degrees is really bad for an extended period of time and 85 and above will kill them quickly like very quickly lighting they don't require uvb but they definitely can benefit from it these guys live in the uh, the jungle floor and so light does filter down to them but most of the time they're in the shade and hiding during the day so if you do use UVB use a low whiting um, substrate you want some kind of organic I'm using the creature soil which is a mixture of kind of eco earth uh, peat moss organic soil uh, humidity you want at least 80% all the time I mean round the clock 80% and it can even be up to 100% um, they can take live plants um, I'm putting a pothos in mine um, the general rule for enclosure size is five gallons per frog you want to provide leaf litter or something that will give them some dry areas so that they don't get toe rot or foot rot um, close off as much as possible if you have a screen hide um, or a screen top and food these guys are primarily going to eat fruit flies uh, they will eat small crickets and small dubias but make sure you dust them and they do not need a water bowl 
Okay, guys, this is the finished enclosure, and there is one of my Azurius Dendrobatus Tictiorus in their new home. Uh, they have the cork round in there, the little mushroom for enrichment, uh, the pothos, golden pothos. This is live pillow moss. There's the other one. He's kind of hiding. Let's see if I can focus here. He's kind of hiding there right inside the door. Um, but hopefully these guys will love their new enclosure. Um, They've got the cork round, a little fake plant. Like I said, the golden pothos. Uh, they've got the drainage layer, nice thick layer of substrate. Got to get more moisture in there. That, that substrate is definitely way too dry right now. We've got sphagnum moss. I'm not sure what this white moss is. Hit me up in the comments if you do know. Um, but uh, spread the pothos out in a couple of places. I am going to give them UVB. Um, I believe the same ideology as Adam from Wicked. Wicked reptiles that uh, animals that have UVB exposure in the wild, uh, it doesn't hurt to give it to them in captivity. If they don't like it or it bothers them, they will go to places in their enclosure that they can get away from it just like they would in the wild. And I believe it could be beneficial, so I'm going to offer it to my dart frogs. But this is the enclosure. I hope you guys enjoyed me putting it together and enjoyed uh, me going over the care information for these guys. And I can't wait to watch them grow. They're so tiny and small right now. But I cannot wait to watch these guys uh, grow up. See his little breathing right there. They are such incredible, amazing creatures. And uh, I hope I've created them a good little home. Okay, Peter's Band of Skinks originate in northern Africa in a region known as the Sahel, below the Sahara Desert, a semi-arid region. Please check out Living Art by Frank Payne, P-A-Y-N-E. His YouTube channel was invaluable with information on the species. Scientific name is Syncopus fasciatus. They live about 15 to 20 years. Males reach sexual maturity at 12 to 14 months. Females at 2 years old. Sexing them is basically impossible. There is no known way. There is Facebook forums that talk about scales by the vent and other ways, head shape and stuff, but no one has been definitive about this and none of this is proven out which has been a major stumbling block to breeding they reach about eight to ten and a half inches full grown temperatures a lot of care guides and youtubers will say 110 to 120 but the only gentlemen successful to breed these guys over in asia keep them in a rack system and they use an under tank heating system at 95 degrees for the hot spot so that's what i'm going to do with my setup and we'll see how it works out cool side about 80 degrees lighting uvb is not necessary because they say buried in the sand in the wild it can't hurt them but it's definitely not not necessary like i said the guys that breathe them do not give them uvb they keep them in a rack system um substrate you want to use straight play sand definitely no calcium sand and no construction type of sand you want the rounded play sand humidity 30 to 40 percent no more than 50 but humidity spikes occasionally are fine this definitely happens to them in the wild enclosure about 20 gallons is okay for two you want a 40 or bigger if you're gonna have a, a group in there i'm using a 36 by 18 by 12 cohabbing uh, I'm, I'm gonna see how it works because I don't know the actual sex of these animals but it's iffy a lot of people I saw uh, had males that fought I, I saw scars I saw females that bullied each other so you want to watch the behavior for cohabbing definitely give them plenty of places to hide food they're going to mainly eat invertebrates mealworms superworms dubious hornworms make sure you gut load all your feeders and some will eat greens and fruits collards mustard and turnips greens and blueberries are the only foods I could find that I know work because there's no real food list they've only been in the U.S. for about five years and you have to give them a water bowl they have been seen to actively drink out of it and they will drink out of the water bowl okay you guys here is the desert sand paradise i have tried to build for my peter's banded skinks and i hope they will like it and um they've got some dubia roaches already in there for tonight when they come out because like i said they are nocturnal they got their water bowl back there in the corner so uh i'm about to introduce these guys into the enclosure and see how they like it and i have already named these two i don't know what sex they are so i tried to pick kind of unisex names so i have named them artax and atreyu um, that was the main character, the boy in NeverEnding Story, and his horse, uh, which were two of my favorite characters when I was growing up. That's one of my favorite movies, and I just happened to watch it recently again. So this is Artax, and Artax looks really good. Um, these are these guys are wild caught, but Artax looks really, really, really good. Uh, he doesn't look like he has any signs of MBD. Um, he's very docile, a really cool dude, but you'll see once these guys get into the enclosure, um, you'll see why they're called sand skinks. We'll see how long it takes him. <laughs> yeah, and I love that about them. They just go straight in. They have this special scale that covers their ear. 
and I'll show you that on the tray you and these guys just go straight under and they will move around during the day and you will see them moving by the, the dirt. It's almost like Bugs Bunny when he moved around the, in the cartoons and uh, he's already emerged and uh, looking for where he's going to ultimately go. But we're going to go ahead and get a tray you out of the bag and um, I'm, I'm a little more concerned about a tray you. Like I said, these guys are wild caught and uh, as you'll see here, a tray you has uh it looks like possibly some mbd in the joints there um he has some more um on his back leg uh at his foot so uh some kind of a lesion um so we're going to keep an eye on the tray you and see how he does we're going to give him the best care we can and he's going to go see the vet soon um if those lesions get any worse or they don't get better he's going to be getting you know a good diet now and good feeders and um we'll see how he uh he thrives and uh we'll go from there but these guys are so cute you can already see them exploring in their little desert uh type setting and uh digging around and that's so super cool matter of fact i meant to show you let me get a tray you back out of here it's okay baby <laughs> blow the sand off of her but they're so incredibly cute but um she's ready to go right now too or he's ready to go but if you can see right there they actually have holes for their ears but it's covered with scales two scales and that's what you see a lot of times in animals that burrow in the dirt there's actually an ear hole underneath those scales those two scales right there um, but that's to keep dirt from getting their ear um, when they go to burrow. So that's a really cool adaptation that this particular species uh, have developed. And a lot of burrowing lizards have that same uh, characteristics. What a cute, adorable lizard. I really think these guys are going to blow up this year in the pet trade. Both of them are trying to dig in the same spot. That's pretty funny. Okay, guys, once again, this is Will the Dragon Whisperer. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Again, big shout out to all the new subscribers. Please, you guys, smash that like button, ring that notification bell, hit me up in the comments if you have any care questions about your animals or any comments about the videos. And uh, me and Athena will see you guys next time. This is Dragon Whisperer, and I'm out.